Good morning, you little nerds. I am Dr. Shireen Idris, and welcome to your morning edition of Pillow Talk Derm Academy, where every Saturday morning we cover a new topic from A to Z. So this week, my friends, we are going to talk about skin barrier health. So put on your chastity belts because your skin is your barrier. Now, what do I mean by that? First of all, obviously I'm a dermatologist. So I may or may not be slightly, a lot, subjective and not as objective as you'd want me to be. But the truth of the matter is, not only is your skin your largest organ, and that is a fact, but I vote it is your most important organ because without your skin being intact, you will completely deflate, get dehydrated and fizzle out, i.e. you will not have a life. I mean, the heart, we can keep you on a machine, your brain, debatable whether some people actually still use their brains, but the truth of the matter is without your skin, you cannot function. Now, the kidneys may be a little bit more important, but that is to be debated. Not a debate for today. Um, so no, but in all seriousness, without your skin being intact, a whole slew of a cascade of unfortunate events can take place. And if our skin is meant to protect our insides, then what exactly is protecting our skin? And that is your skin barrier health. And that is the big topic. It's been a huge topic of 2021, where everybody is all of a sudden skin barrier experts talking about the skin barrier as if, as if it was the, the newest thing since sliced bread, as if it just got recently discovered. Your skin barrier, let's talk about this. Your skin itself is made up of various layers. There's three main components, if I had to simplify it. There is your epidermis, the up most topmost upper crust layer of your skin. Consider that the cheese of your pizza. Then we have the dermis, which is your marinara sauce. And then we have the subcutaneous tissue, which is the dough. So those are the three layers of pizza and those are the three layers of your skin. Now within the epidermis, within the cheesy layer, the cheese is not created equal all across your pie. You have the gooeyness, which is the deeper part, and then you have the crispy, charred, uppermost part, which is perfection, and that is your stratum corneum, which is the most upper part of your skin. Now, within the stratum corneum, we have corneocytes, which are skin cells, okay? Uh, and then we have the glue holding the corneocytes together, and that is what we call the lipid matrix. It is made up of cholesterol, yep, we got cholesterol in our skin. Fatty acids, and you've heard this one before, ceramides. Think of ceramides, fatty acids, and cholesterol like the cement that is gluing the cells together, okay? And that, my friends, is the skin in a nutshell. Now you have your PhD. So without your skin barrier, or when it is disrupted, what should we expect? You have inflamed skin. Your skin is red. Your skin is irritated, like my toddler. By the way, I'm in a mood right now because I just went through 45 minutes of screaming, so I apologize if I am slightly delusional at the moment. It is currently 9.30 p.m. while I'm recording this. But aggressors, let's take a step. You know what, I may or may not choose to edit this video because I think this might be pure entertainment. But without your skin barrier, what happens? Your skin is actually gonna be more open and available for aggressors to aggress. And what do I mean by that? That means you might have openings within your skin and aggressors, environmental toxins, pollution, a super strong ingredient that you don't necessarily want to have deeper penetration for and get your mind out of the gutter. Um, different pathogens can wreak havoc on your skin and you will see your skin getting completely annihilated, inflamed, red, irritated, it might feel burning, it might feel itchy, and you just can't seem to get it under control. And products your skin might have tolerated for your whole life all of a sudden will feel like the worst thing to possibly put on the surface of your face. 
So what are signs again of an impaired skin barrier? Like I just said, redness, flaking, irritability, itchiness, anger, pain, burning, basically all of the negatives in one. And what causes, what are the, what are the root causes of damaging a skin barrier? Well, let's first start with intrinsically. So psychologically, believe it or not, distress can inflame your skin barrier because your cortisol levels are out of whack and that will affect your skin. Um, genetically, some people are predisposed to having a broken skin barrier, but that is a really long topic for another day. And certain medical conditions like diabetes can break your skin barrier and, you know, predispose you to having broken skin in some places, ulcerations, etc. But most causes of a broken skin barrier are actually external. So extreme weather variations. And we are living in a day and age where yesterday, I kid you not, it was 60 degrees and today it was snowing. So extreme fluctuations in weather temperature, um, allergens, pollen, irritants. This is where sometimes people who have never been allergic to fragrance, all of a sudden break their skin barrier, become allergic to fragrance because their skin barrier was disrupted, can develop allergies. Um, what else can we say? Alkaline soaps, so soaps that are extremely basic in their pH, which we will get to in a minute. Um, over exfoliating, that is a big one. That is a big one. All of you guys, I feel like exfoliating acids when I recorded this video over a year ago, I was like, it's kind of underestimated. People don't exfoliate. Then 2021 happened and everybody became chemists and everybody started over exfoliating their faces. And the amount of broken skin barriers and breakouts that I was seeing in my office from over exfoliating alone, like people using the Biologique Recherche P50 twice a day, every day was insane. So over exfoliating, and that's on you. Um, steroids, topical steroids, overuse of topical steroids can break your skin barrier over time. And I mean, there's a, a bunch of other ones, but those are just kind of hitting the top of the nail. So remember I talked about pH and alkaline soaps? The reason that can disrupt your skin barrier is because our skin barrier is actually slightly acidic. Yes, we are a little vinegary, acidy people. <laughs> Okay, um, not because we are bitter at life, but just because we're acidic. We're a little spicy like that. All of us, even the sweetest of the bunch, have an acidic skin barrier mantle. And why is our acid mantle in place? Why does it even exist? Why does our skin need to be acidic? Because this is the genius of skin. Having that slight acidity enables it to kill bacteria, viruses, fungi, um, I, fungi, fungi, it's still debatable as to what you want to call it, but funguses, uh, whatever, infections, it helps you ward them all off and maintain a healthy skin. So when you're using a soap that is too basic, you're over stripping that acidity. When you're over exfoliating, you're getting rid of that acidity. When you're overdoing it, you're also breaking that away making your skin vulnerable to all of the aggressors in the world. Because the world, I'm telling you guys, is an aggressive place, not just emotionally, but also physically. And so I will tell you this, most often than not, at least in today's day and age, and I would honestly say seven out of 10 times, the reason your skin barrier is disrupted is because you, my friend, are way overdoing it. So how can you repair your skin barrier? First and foremost, and second and third and fourth and fifth is simplify your skincare routine. And I blame the media for this. We went on a K-beauty craze where all of a sudden we thought we need 30 steps in our skincare routine. Now, I myself have done videos where I talk about various steps to your skincare routine, but if you listen to the words coming out of my mouth, I often talk about alternating nights and not doing everything on the same night. So simplifying your skincare routine is first and foremost. Now, how do we simplify our skincare routine? The root of simplification is focusing your skincare on one skin issue, focusing it on the most pressing skin issue and trying to help that issue first and then tackling the next. So that is golden rule number one. Rule number two, once you have focused your skincare on your skin issue, now we can tailor it by using a 
hydrating cleanser, for example, especially if our skin barrier has already been disrupted. We want a skin cleanser that is going to nourish and really feed our skin. Gone are the days of super, 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 super stripping, super foamy cleansers. Foaming cleansers now can actually help maintain your skin balance. But I would prefer it be a non-foaming, maybe call me a person of habit, I still would prefer a non-foaming cleanser because with foams, there are other additives in there to make them foam and those additives themselves can be irritating. So you want a nourishing, calming cleanser, ideally with a pH closest to your skin's pH. So closer to approximately five-ish. I actually really like this one by Aveeno. They have their Calm and Restore Nourishing Oat Cleanser for Sensitive Skin. And I like it because it is also fragrance-free. So when your skin barrier is disrupted, you do want to stick to fragrance-free products. And this is a cleanser I like a lot. As you guys can see, it is very thick. It is a gel cleanser. Is this cleanser gonna be the best cleanser for you that is going to get your makeup off and wash your face and do everything all at once? Probably not. But is it gonna help you get to where you need to be so you can start living a more healthy skin life? Absolutely. So that is number one. Number two, when it comes to exfoliating acids, when your skin barrier is absolutely inflamed insane then we're gonna step back on exfoliating for a minute okay we're gonna take it easy and i'm gonna tell you this quit it quit it for a few weeks you will not become a wart you will not you will not you will be okay it is better to go through a period where you are just focusing on nourishing your skin okay without overstripping it because you're thinking you're going to try to compensate for maybe you haven't exfoliated in 24 hours and you're going to allow your skin to calm down and once you decide to re-enter the exfoliating game i would strongly advise you do not go for the strongest thing right away throw away that red exfoliating acid from the ordinary or the sakura baby facial from uh, what are they called drunken elephant you want to go for something that is not as insane or intense okay usually even for polyhydroxy acid, a PHA, lactobionic, maltobionic, those acids tend to be gentler and easier on the skin. And maybe I'd say you would only do it two times a week at night. That's it for a few weeks and we go from there. So that is exfoliating acids. Now, after we have talked about the exfoliating acids, a lot of people are scared of occlusives. But occlusives, like this guy, is going to be your best friend. Because this occlusive, petrolatum, Vaseline, does not deserve the bad rep that it gets. And putting a thick layer of all over your face is going to really lock in hydration on your face. And quite frankly, I will use this if your my skin barrier was super inflamed after even using a strong humectant, something that is glycerin based. And the one that I love the most, and I've spoken about this a million times and is actually currently in my shower in my bathroom, is La Roche Posay's Cicaplast Bombi 5 because it is glycerin based and it has zinc. So that is going to help calm it. And if my skin barrier is super inflamed, I would put a thick layer of this guy on top of it. Vaseline itself has been proven to block nearly 99% of water loss. So if anything, if you don't want to use even a humectant or a moisturizer before it, I don't blame you because you want less is more, just use this. And this is not going to be in lieu of Waleda. And I love skin food, especially for the lips when you have a broken lip, um, because I really just like the texture. But Skin food, for example, has essential oils. And essential oils are not gonna be your friend if you have a broken skin barrier because you might actually develop an allergy to it or become even more irritated. So I would avoid the essential oils altogether. Um, so this is a great occlusive. Another one that people love is lanolin. And this is called a nipple cream because women use this while they are breastfeeding. But lanolin is actually what is in Aquaphor. It is a wool oil derivative, um, so it is not vegan, but you can also use lanolin as an occlusive, not, a, not an exclusive, an occlusive. And then finally, the French are obsessed with homeoplasmine, which is another occlusive that you can actually try. 
Super quick intermission, I'm about to mention a product which I did not give a proper introduction for, but this is a super rich emollient that is going to help replenish the lipids within your skin barrier. I think Triple Lipid by SkinCeuticals is one that is the perfect combination of 2% ceramides, 4% cholesterol, and 2% fatty acids. Now, do those three components ring a bell? Ding, ding, ding! They were the glue that were holding your cornea sites together when I was talking about the cement. And it's a little pricey, I'm not gonna lie. The texture is just divine. Um, but the reason it's pricey is because ceramides are very expensive to formulate with. Take it from me, um, I've now entered the other side of the conversation and they are very, very, very expensive to formulate with. So that's why usually when you find something of quality with ceramides, it tends to be on the pricier side. But I do really like this particular product. It is silky, it is smooth, and it is so beautiful. And last, skin barrier health is not just reserved for the face. We also have our bodies to worry about. And this one by Isden is Uridin Lotion, which has urea. And urea is also a very strong humectant, uh, one that is not to be underestimated. And I love the scent of this. It just feels completely beautiful and lovely. So there you have it. These are the occlusives and the humectants that I would strongly recommend you use. My husband is just staring at me like a stalker in the corner, but I'm going to ignore him. Um, so I strongly recommend you guys use these occlusives. And last, completely last, I want to talk quickly, very quickly for two seconds about hands and feet, but hands more specifically because of all the hand washing we've been undergoing for the past two years. I love this guy by uh, O'Keefe's Working Hands. It is a glycerin based hand cream. And what I would tell you is if you have a broken skin barrier, especially of your hands, you may get more eczematous uh, rashes on your hands, really cracky, etc. I would use a very generous amount of this baby and i would go to sleep and i know this sounds weird but in latex free gloves not cotton gloves latex free plasticky gloves because it will definitely absorb better if you are wearing a cotton glove you're basically just absorbing the skin the hand cream in the glove but that is hands and comes to lifestyle Invest in a humidifier if the environment is very, very dry. If you are in a very humid environment, you do not need to moisturize as much because like I said, both extremes can actually worsen your skin barrier health and break it down. So maybe skimp on the moisturizer in very humid environments and just focus on maybe an occlusive at night only. And if you're in a very dry environment, load up on the humectants and the occlusives and invest in a really good humidifier. And with that, I am Dr. Shireen Idris. I apologize for being slightly all over the map this evening, but it has been a crazy two hours. And anybody there with two toddlers under the age of four will know what I'm talking about. I hope you have a beautiful and uneventful Saturday. I'll see you guys next week.